I love a Slurpee. It has a lot of sugar in it. It has a sweet product. Oh, Lord. We're well, going to be able to... You're going to be able to stay awake till midnight. I would say that there was a time when one or more Slurpees was consumed in a day by me. And big ones, right? Like like Blue this cup. size. Yeah, this Blue is the medium now, but this used to be the large. Like you could get a Slurpee for like 35 cents and it was like... That would be like my breakfast size. I'd get like breakfast food or <laughs> shooter. Oh, Slurpee shooters. Oh, are you getting a brain freeze? I didn't heed the warning. Oh, oh. it's like you've never been here. It's oh. e- it's even written on the outside. Okay, young, if you get a brain freeze, press all of the Rebecca against the roof. That of your does mouth. not work. It doesn't work. It absolutely doesn't work. <laughs> Does not Both work. of the Rebeccas <laughs> got a brain freeze at the same time today. Oh, it hurts. <laughs> Well, you can only hear one of them crying, though. Mm. The other one's just giggling. I will say that um, lids would have been nice in our youth. How old are you? (laughs) Younger than a Slurpee. Older than a lid. (laughs) (laughs) Older than serve yourself. Uh, Cue the music. (laughs) Wait, have we started? Rebecca, I'm Paige, and this is Made from What's Left. Do you, you know I went to Grant Park? Yeah. What you... was your closest Sev? Niagara, dude. I lived <laughs> very near the street that has two seven two Seven Elevens, Niagara. <laughs> so it kind of depended. Niagara, on... <laughs> Niagara. Did you live between them? Could you choose? Yeah. No. Yeah. No. Yeah. No. I was closer to Corden. Mm. Okay. High school. Yep. Is. Uh, the subject today okay you went to grant park yeah we call it grunt pork <laughs> grunt pork yep <laughs> what was your best or favorite subject well they don't have to be one in the same because sometimes you excel in something but you like something better i actually loved drafting does that oh, come really? as any surprise <laughs> i loved drafting no is that your favorite it was i had a drafting table in my bedroom Cool. I'm just telling you this now. Wait, you did? Uh, I was obsessed with drafting. Did you have a drafting machine on your drafting table? No, but I had like a tea thing and a thing. Look at that. I didn't have that. There was a time when I could have been you. <laughs> um, did you win any awards? Speaking oh, God. of our class. You know I did. <laughs> just a yeah. chance to brag. <laughs> Relive okay. those days. Yes, I won the Johnston Tukowski Excellence in Art Award. How about you? I did not <laughs> win the, the David Gazowski Excellence in Journalism Award. I won nothing. Did? I didn't win any awards, but oh. our class won Spirit Week one year, and uh, I helped. Did you skip classes? Mm-hmm. And if so, where did you go? Always the cafeteria. You would skip to go to the cafeteria? Yeah, pretty much. I would get on a bus. I'd go downtown. Oh, yeah, no. I'd go for a glass of wine. We would go, <laughs> what? Yeah. Oh. Portage, when Portage Place opened. Wine. Well, wine and olives. <laughs> what? And you call me fancy. We had, <laughs> we would, um, we would go to the cafeteria and play asshole. So you would just sit there? We would just sit there and play card games. Yeah. Excellent. Favorite cafeteria item. Good segue, by the way. <laughs> With that cafeteria oh. talk. Did you have a full cafeteria at Grant Park? Most of the time I was there, yes. With hot foods? N- yeah, near the end, though, it was like vending machines. But do I get to pick from favorite items from also the <laughs> the little uh, sh- store that was down there, too? You had a little store? Yeah, we had a little store and it had candy. And sesame snaps? N- probably. Oh, that was my favorite. Okay, what was, really? you, what was your favorite item? Wait a minute, you can't pick sesame snaps as a favorite hot food item though no just as like a favorite like school store item okay well that's still an invalid choice (laughs) if there were candies i still have them stuck to my teeth (laughs) which are decorative (laughs) um hot food item it was literally just the crinkle cut fries with gravy yep in a little like cardboard boat (sighs) yeah 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 you i think that's a universal experience you kind of have to right fries and gravies yeah. Fries and gravies. All of the them. The gravy was plural. <laughs> How many 
many pieces of gravy would you like? Uh, we also had a deep fried pierogi. Oh. That came with a scoop of sour cream. Deep in Ukrainian Winnipeg. Yeah. Sometimes this filling had completely exited the pierogi. So you just got like a okay. fried pierogi shell. But actually, I'm in it for the shell. Yeah, it was really I good. I would like that. Yeah. You just kind of scoop up the sour cream. <laughs> um, they did a mean cinnamon bun. We oh had to get there early. Oh, my Okay. And it was just a window, like just a window into a little room with deep fryers. Like yeah. none of this American push a tray. Oh, we never had, yeah. Ours that was too. weird. Yeah. And I don't even think J.H. Bruns. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I've had more high schools than jobs, by the way. Um, I don't believe that. When I went to J.H. Bruns, I don't even think they had a cafeteria. I think they microwaved pizza pops in this like teacher lounge or oh, something. Oh, yeah, pizza pops were good. Thinking of the um, breakfast club archetypes. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> were you a jock, nerd, weirdo, rebel? <sighs> were you a cool kid? What were you? I was probably more closely aligned with like the skateboarder guys. Yeah, me too. All my friends are guys. I don't know what would we call that. Like the, well, not the cool kids, but the cool to us kids. Yeah, it was the cool to us kids. Yeah, kind of like the alternative Maybe alternative. I just, we never used that word at the time. Did you notice my cure switch? I did. (laughs) Repping. (laughs) I was kind of like into the, yeah, like the emo. Emo. Ska. Yep. Skate. We would have been friends. Fashion-y. A little little bit on the preppy, but not really. How did you get to school? I walked. Oh boy. I took a bus. A bus? A city bus. Well, you see, the problem I had is that we lived several blocks in a direction buses didn't travel they all traveled east west and we lived north of the yeah. school so it was just it, i could have hopped on a bus that would have taken me like two and a half <laughs> short blocks which would have only gained me about a quarter of my walk see my problem was our bus went from south st vital to downtown and school was roughly in the middle so you could just stay so you could just stay on the bus on the bus <laughs> <laughs> and go buy records that would be tricky no wonder you went downtown when you were skipping, and I didn't. Okay, here's a good one. Could you survive a rom-com switched bodies suddenly back in high school situation? Oh, I would love it. Would you? Would you do it again? Yeah. That'd be well, kind of fun. Depends no, kind of on the fun. year. Like Never Been Kissed? I love that movie. I think I would, I would enjoy that. I'd probably make an effort this time around. I don't think I made much of an effort. Oh, so like you mean with hindsight, you would have maybe done something different. No, like if I went back now, I would like blow them all away with my art skills that oh. I've picked well, yeah. up along the way. So you're, okay, so yeah, so you've got... Or my writing. Oh. I would write things. And you would, <laughs> you might have gotten an award. I might know more about world history or current <laughs> events. <laughs> you might be able to predict the future. <laughs> See, what I needed is about 30 years more life experience. <laughs> we all did. And final question. Yeah. Where did your parents go to school? <laughs> I don't actually know the answer to that. Oh, really? no. Really? Uh, my dad went to Tech Bach. See? There you go. I don't know where my mom went to school. Where did your Where did your parents go to school? Uh, my mom went to Lethbridge Collegiate Institute, LCI. <laughs> okay. Don't ask me why I know that. And uh, <laughs> my dad went to Daniel Mack. Oh, so did Jim. Oh, that's so cute. Aw. I have some fun facts about Daniel Mack. Cool. But Jim might dispute them. Well, I would like for him to have that opportunity. Do you want me to hit you with a fun Daniel Mack fact? Are you ready for that? Are we ever going to do early facts? Yeah, we can do some facts. Do your facts. <laughs> or did you just we'll wanna... come back to Daniel Mack. <laughs> it's been there since 1923. It's not going anywhere. <laughs> well, since you've started, carry on. <laughs> Did you know that it is uh, said to be the only high school in Winnipeg with a marble bathroom? Or more than one. Marble bathrooms. Well, I believe that. I mean, well, marble. Marble? What in the bathroom is marble? I don't know, but I read it online. Just all of it. (laughs) The whole thing is marble. (laughs) I just, I have a vague recollection of every school bathroom I've ever been in being terrazzo. Okay, yeah. And like. Yeah concrete block and I think the bathrooms at Daniel Mac were like a little fancier clearly like bay bathroom like downtown bay bathroom wow fancy. like brass and can I tell you a fun fleurs de lis can I tell you, you another fun fact how do you pluralize that yeah 
Notable alumni? Yeah. Mayor Bill Norrie. Oh! And of course, your Jim. <laughs> My dad. Notable <laughs> alumni. <laughs> and one more fun fact. Do tell. The architect was J.N. Simmons. Okay. He was associated with the architectural firm of McKim, Mead, and White. I'm aware. Yeah. You're aware. And he supervised the construction of the Bank of Montreal building at Portage in Maine. How cool. He worked on the Winnipeg Civic Auditorium, which we <laughs> talked about last episode. And he was the consulting architect for the Winnipeg School Division. So huh. he knew his stuff. Cool. Okay, you can hit me with all your beginning of time fun facts. Well, I don't have a lot. Oh, boy. <laughs> So the f- under promise over deliver. <laughs> That's what I do. <laughs> um, the first school in Manitoba was probably a small log structure built in 1871 and located in Point Douglas. Not a high school. Because back then schools were just kind of an everything school. How many kids actually went all the way up to like the 12th grade at that time? I don't even think there was a 12th grade. Well, cholera would wipe you out by grade eight. <laughs> <laughs> um... The architect responsible for most of the Winnipeg schools that were built between 1901 and 1925 Mm -hmm. is J.B. Mitchell. Oh, yeah. And they named a school after him. And they named a school after him. And what was that, uh, the other architect's name that you mentioned? Simmons. Simmons? J.N. Simmons. So, like, what I I learned, so J.B. Mitchell was James Bertram Mitchell. Sure. Um, What I noticed is that a lot of the fellas... (laughs) They just went with their initials? They went with the first... I'm thinking that maybe I'll just go by P.V. Lloyd. So you can just call me P.V. Lloyd now. I think that the people at P.V. Mart would have a problem with that. <laughs> they can continue to <laughs> have With like a word. <laughs> <laughs> um, so by 1900, it... Okay, so this is a weird fact. All right. By 1900, it had been ascertained by medical authorities... Throughout- ascertained. Okay, go on. I'm sorry. This is the high school yes. episode. <laughs> so, <laughs> does this mean we're gonna act like we're in high school <laughs> when um, don't we <laughs> for a change um so by 1900 it had been ascertained by medical authorities throughout north america that cross lighting created by windows on either side of a classroom damaged children's eyesight what? yeah yeah that skeptical look on your face is what i and both all of the rebecca's are looking at me like i'm a lunatic um, the solution was to combine all the windows onto one side of the school in an arrangement uh, uh, seen in all of Hooper's plans. Mm-hmm. Hooper was an architect who did several schools in mm-hmm. Winnipeg as well. So, I don't know. I just thought that was I always kinda... thought that was like, because there was like a, a hall on one side and then windows on the other. But... Right. But if you think about like in 1900, it was literally just a little one room building. Right. And there could have been windows on either side. Damaging ch- all that all natural those light. Eyes. Damaging children's <laughs> eyes. I think when you design uh, daycares and things now, you have like a per child amount of natural, like square footage of window that you have to include. And it's pretty high. I would say that J.H. Bruns in Southdale <laughs> has approximately three windows in the entire building and they're all in the office. Oh, <laughs> good for them. A windowless box. Good for them. Um, so are you familiar with normal school? Yes. Do you have any of that in your notes? No, I thought I'd let you take care of all the normal talk. (laughs) People often will post a picture of a school that says normal school and then like, but explain. The normal schools were like our normal school was the predecessor to the Manitoba Teacher Society. Mm -hmm. It was actually like where teachers were trained. Mm Mm-hmm. And um, so our building at 442 William, Mm -hmm. Central Normal School, I think it's called, Mm -hmm. uh, was one of six built in Manitoba. Mm -hmm. It was constructed in 1905 um, from plans by provincial architect Samuel Hooper, who was the one who incorporated... (laughs) Do you mean S. Hooper? What? S. Hooper? (laughs) Yeah, S. Hooper. (laughs) If only we knew his middle name. At a cost of about $100,000 as a neoclassical structure. Um, made of Tyndall limestone with interior wood of oak and fir. And it's on the National Historic Register. It's also on our heritage planner's list of resources, protected resources. Do we know how many schools have a heritage designation in the city? I actually tried to figure that out. I was actually counting just for high schools. 
I don't know if most of the ones I found were high schools or not. Right. So I have Because there's what, confirmed. like 45-ish high schools? Hey, that's the, the number I got too. How about that? <laughs> and they're going to build a new one in Sage Creek. Are they? They are. Okay, so um, they, they should. Um, so I have a note. I know of th- two. <laughs> <laughs> what are they? St. Mary's Academy and Balmoral Hall. Oh, cool. Do you know that Balmoral Hall? Slightly haunted. <laughs> I didn't, but I believe it. Mm-hmm. Hey, did you know I got to go into the dome at St. Mary's? Really? Academy, yeah. And the funny thing is, so <laughs> my niece was at the school, mm-hmm. and they had Generations Day or something like that, where you bring old people in, and she asked me she, if I would come. She thought of you first. <laughs> <laughs> so I joined her for Old People's Day, and uh, they took us on a tour, mm-hmm. and they took us to the dome, and it was absolutely sweltering hot up there. About. And I was excitedly telling this to a friend of mine who went to St. Mary's Academy, and she was scandalized because she was never allowed in the dome when she went to the school. Oh, my God. <laughs> I would have asked so, yeah. for my money back. <laughs> yeah. Your tuition. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. Okay. Well, anyway, that's sort of it for early facts. Okay. I told you it wasn't a ton, but I have some trivia and I have some quick facts. Okay. So, and then I've got some info on Grand Park and Tech Box. So tell me, how do you want to... Play it out. I have info on Glenlon, the Glenlon. Collegiate, J.H. Mm-hmm. Bruns, Murdoch McKay, a few uh, fun facts from Grant Park, and Kelvin. Well, let's do the trivia. Okay. Give do you some. want to? Hey, t- Paige. Hey, Paige. <laughs> yes? Do you have any trivia about Winnipeg High School? Rebecca? I do. Can you tell me while I drink my Slurpee? Yeah, but, well, you have to answer. Mm. You can do <laughs> yes or no answer. Oh, is this a quiz? No, yeah, kind of. Okay. Well, trivia. I didn't have time to study. Do we know what trivia is? Okay, so... Well, trivia in itself is just trivia. <laughs> <laughs> Which Winnipeg High School mm-hmm. occupies the land that was originally home to the Métis community commonly known as Roostertown? Grant Park. Which Winnipeg High School was designed by a conscientious objector? MBCI. Grant Park. Really? At the time of its construction. Which... Oh, wait, hang on. Are all these questions about Grant Park? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I'd get through more before you talk about it. <laughs> I'm like I'm running out of schools. At the time of its construction, which Winnipeg High School had the largest single floor in Western Canada? Would that be Grant Park? It is. <laughs> which Winnipeg High School is rumored to be an exact copy of an original found in Southern California? I'm going to say Grant Park, and here's why. <laughs> it's actually like a lovely little mid-century building, isn't it? Isn't it? It, it has is. some mid-century details. Yep. Which Winnipeg High School still uses a student design logo that was created in the 90s? Well, I'm going to ask you this. Does that pirate have a name? <gasps> it's not the pirate logo. Is there a different logo? Yeah. <gasps> What's the logo? Uh, it's like a G with like crossed swords. I can show you. Uh, no, I think I... I think I see it in my mind's eye. So are you thinking it's Grant Park? Because you'd be right. Don't forget that my child went to Grant Park. Which Winnipeg High School has two hidden inner courtyards. Is it Grant Park? (laughs) (laughs) Other schools, other notable schools with uh, courtyards are Uh Daniel Uh Mack, Westwood, J.B. Mitchell, Uh St. Paul's, and probably like a dozen others. I don't really know. Elementary schools, Minnetonka. Yeah. Which Winnipeg High School offers AP? <laughs> There's actually three. I'm going to guess uh, Grant Park. Yeah. Murdoch McKay. Nope. Oh, I'm out. Daniel Mack. Yep. And Sisler. You know Sisler is Winnipeg's largest high school? I do. That's in my quick facts. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and then for a little bit of a break, okay. uh, which Winnipeg High School was originally located at the current site of Mulvey School? Woolsey and Maryland. Mulvey School. Kelman. No. Grant Park. Gordon Bell. Gordon Bell was. Yeah. Well, that's interesting. Yeah. It is not there any longer. Uh, correct. Because Mulvey School is there. Which Winnipeg High School? Or Dolores, as we call it. Dolores. <laughs> you said that out loud. Um, <clears throat> which Winnipeg High School won a Massey Medal in Architecture, a gold medal, in 1964? 
Is it still Grant Park? Nope. <laughs> I told you this is. Is it really... Vincent Massey? No. Oh, well, that would have made sense. Mm, yeah. Uh, right give, on it, the give it to me. Uh, St. Paul's. Oh. oh. Interesting. Yeah. I think that's it. One of our many private schools. <laughs> yes. Well, and oh, I forgot to say, when um, when I was at school, there was no AP program. It was called Gifted and Talented. Gifted and Talented. <laughs> yes. It was the Gifted and Talented program. And I was in Gifted and Talented Math. It's funny. I'd never heard of that. <laughs> kid. I was in like in elementary school. They don't I tell was, everyone. I was in some sort of extra program in elementary where when I finished my work, I had to do different work. Uh, like uh, manual labor? Yeah. No, there were like little boxes of things that I had to solve or <laughs> like reading comprehension. And it was like gifted. What, what but grade? Like uh, it was like a busy, a keep busy thing. This would have been like grade four and five because I skipped grade three. Was it like a Rebecca talks too much if she doesn't have something to do so we're gonna give her a little task? No it was Rebecca finishes her work too quickly. So she's wicked to, smart. She's wicked smart. <laughs> she reads really really fast <laughs> so we're gonna have to get her to do some extra. Excellent. And they were color-coded. I want to find those things again because that was a lot of fun. I could work <laughs> that into my day now. <laughs> I'm sure you could just whip through them. <laughs> So, uh, as I mentioned earlier, yeah, I went to four high schools. What? I went to four high You've schools. You've had more than four jobs. I'm just saying. Okay. What? what f- why so many? I started at Glenlawn. Okay. Then my parents moved, and I was no longer in the catchment. Oh. So I had to go to J.H. Bruns. Which I'm still not convinced is even a school. And I thought that wasn't cool enough, so I went to the collegiate. Ooh. And I also wanted to do fashion, so I went to Murdoch McKay, but I couldn't get into fashion, so I left after a week. <laughs> Wait, does that count then? And also someone threw a sandwich at me, and they thought I was a narc. So Young Rebecca's dying right now. <laughs> well, someone get Young Rebecca a beverage. The real question here, here is, what was the sandwich? It was like, like a meat, like a, maybe like a bologna... Or like a, it was like a pressed meat. Were you were you able to just like reassemble it and have yourself a lunch? Well, no, because I was like probably wearing a meat is murder shirt at the time. Oh, and that was probably why they <laughs> threw the sandwich at me. Were you vegetarian? Oh yeah. And then they they threw meat at you. Yeah, and oh. I was like, that's it, meat is murder. I'm out of here. High school kids are rough. Oh. <laughs> but I, I think they thought I was a narc. And also, were you a narc? I, well, I might have been a narc. In English, they were doing Macbeth, and I had done Macbeth like twice already. <laughs> so you were like over it. You were so, so I could have stuck it out. You couldn't and even. got an A. <laughs> <laughs> but? But not. Hmm. Okay, so my first high school, mm-hmm. my chosen high school, my forever high school was Glenlawn. Okay, so what grade are you starting in? 10. Oh my God, you had four schools from 10 to 12? Yes. I'm just assuming you're seven to twelve. Four schools, four year. Or, well, that's no, not I, math. I went to uh, Minnetonka for elementary and junior high. Oh, well, later elementary. So I was at Wren's first. I've been to several schools. How many schools from In total? one to twelve? Mini school for Wren's, Minnetonka, Glenlawn. Uh, seven. She's like a. Tornado, just a path of destruction. <laughs> what um, seven schools? And I'm friends with everyone I went to school with. Still. Does mini school count? Mini school was a school. Yeah, but is it pre K? Oh yeah, I guess that was pre K and K. Yeah, I don't count K. One to twelve. So five schools, six. Still six. Still six. How did you get well, another I went one? To two elementary or two? Yeah, two elementary schools. <laughs> Well, I went to two. It's like I was a transient child. You were. <laughs> <laughs> I went to two schools my whole life. Do you want to know some, some facts about Glenlawn? Yeah. Glenlawn, located at 770 St. Mary's Road. It opened in, technically, this is debated a little bit, opened in 1922 as the Norbury High School Department. Norbury. With five students graduating in 1923. In 1930, the name was changed to Glenlawn Collegiate Institute, and the present location opened in 1950. 
Doesn't the words collegiate institute seem redundant? GCI? Is it, it a collegiate? Better. Is it an institute? It's both. And the people there are quite collegial. <laughs> and institutional. <laughs> uh, the 10 classroom school was designed by Winnipeg architect Ewart Fitzmunn. Hmm. Oh, yeah. A EFM. partner of the firm Smith Munn Carter. <laughs> Smith Munn Carter and Katnilkoff. Help me. I'm learning to pronounce Katnilkoff. <laughs> Kat, Just to Kat, say it Kat fast. Katnikoff? Katnikoff. <laughs> SMCK. Just <laughs> <laughs> so say Smith Carter. <laughs> Smith Carter. He designed several schools between 1926 and 1959, including River Heights School on yeah. Grosvenor. Yeah. But not Grosvenor School on Grosvenor. No. I guess that's different. It, uh, what year was it? Was Glenlon? 1950. Yeah. See, Gro- Grosvenor was way before. It was in the 20s or something. Yeah. Uh, 1956, an addition was made to a now demolished building. That doesn't make sense to me. <laughs> <laughs> I guess now it's demolished. There was something there at the time <laughs> to add to. Uh, 1956, academic wing by Pratt and Lindgren Lindgren. forms the center of the school's facade and became the template for future additions. Cool. The building was originally a two-story self-contained structure with nine classrooms, a science lab, and a library. Doesn't seem like a lot of classrooms. It doesn't. Uh, October 1993, there was a big fire. Mm. A devastating fire. Most of them are. Arson. Oh. It was determined. Uh, that claimed a large portion of the school. And the renovations. Somebody had homework due. That... <laughs> I think we went to school with the arsonist. I'm not going to say. <laughs> what are they into well, now? The starting rumors. Are they a firefighter now? <laughs> the renovations included that big theater that's on the front. Oh, yeah. So when I went to Glenlon, that was just like a rickety tar paper extension on the school. It was oh. like weird, like linoleum floors and mm. funny little classrooms. Sounds rough. I know. Uh, notable alumni. Yes. Nigel Dawes, professional hockey player. Mm. Oh, yeah. Reed Carruthers. Oh, yeah. The world men's curling champion. <laughs> Jim Peebles. Won the Nobel Prize in Physics, perhaps most notably, Dancing Gabe. Ah! Glenn Lawn graduate. We love him. We love Dancing Gabe. Happy 60th birthday. Yeah. To Dancing Gabe. So he was there a little bit before me. Oh. <laughs> Just a little Just bit. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. Uh, the mascot, Arthur the Lion. Yes. Go Lions. Uh, 1,162 students, grades 9 to 12. Wow, you have a lot of facts. I, I have a lot of facts. For the record, I don't have a lot of facts. Can I tell you another fun fact? Please do. This May, they're having the 100th anniversary celebration reunion. Oh, wow. Uh, J.H. Bruns, I know you're dying to find out. I'm not, okay, J.H. Bruns. Where's it located? 250 Lakewood Boulevard. Oh, goodness. In the heart of Southdale. Yeah. Just off Fermore? No. Like in the... Uh, it's down Be- Lakewood. Like between Bishop Grandin and Fermore. Okay. Like equidistant, yeah, I would yeah. say. Okay. There's like a big lakeish sort of thing. And it's a school, we're sure? It's school. Okay. High yeah, school? Yeah, I, I really didn't know much about Southdale <laughs> before I went there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I didn't get too attached. Hmm. How long were you there? I was there for a year. For my final year. Before they kicked you out? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I had to, I had to retake grade 10 gym. In grade 12. Come on, That's really? That's all I'm going to say about that. Really? <laughs> I have to reevaluate this friendship. Uh, well, the school divisions do their gym credits in a different way. And uh, they wouldn't accept my St. Patel's archery. Right? <laughs> they made me do trampoline in grade 12. That's amazing. It wasn't. What? <laughs> as a young developing woman. Oh, sure. All right. I fine. might as well have been an adult. Because they hadn't invented <laughs> <Trampoline>. <laughs> they hadn't invented sports bras by then. They had not. <laughs> <laughs> Spandex was still a privilege, not a right. Oh. Uh, it was named after Brother Joseph H. Bruns, who had a lengthy and renowned career as an educator in St. Boniface. Hmm. Brother Joseph respond. must have been a monk, right? Or something. Like, you know, nuns or sisters, wouldn't he be like, oh, I guess a priest or, yeah, I I guess monk would be wrong. If only we could (laughs) research this. If only we could go back and say, oh, he must have been a a priest of some sort. 
And Saint Boniface. I wonder if he's on the Manitoba Historic Society's notable people list. <laughs> we could look him up, <laughs> Mr. Bruns. Uh, the school was designed by the architectural firm of Take a Deep Breath. Giver. Moody, Moore, Duncan, Rattray, mm. Peters, Searle, and Christie. <laughs> no uh, sink combs and death threats. <laughs> The school opened in September of 1972, sharing its gymnasium and sports facilities with the Southdale Recreation Association. Okay, so here's what's interesting. When they opened it... I'm waiting. When they opened it, it functioned as a middle school, offering grades 5 to 8, and then every year they would add a grade (laughs) until they got to 12. Is that because they were also doing additions? Because I actually read a little bit about how most schools were built... For future expansions, because they were predicting a bit of a population boom. Oh, I'm thinking, this is my theory. Like, how old is Southdale? Probably 1972-ish. Like, if it's a new area, it would have aged with the kids. Right. Right? Yeah. That's my theory. I think that's a good theory. Uh, Notable alumni? Do tell. There were none listed online. But I'm going to throw one in there. You? Norm Frommel, Manitoba Basketball Hall of Fame member. Were you just making this up? Or? Well, no, I went to oh, school with him. He was seven feet thing. tall. Oh, really? He was seven feet tall. Did he play basketball? He did. <laughs> yes, he was in the Basketball <laughs> Hall of Fame. Yeah, no, I went to school with him. And I couldn't find any notable alumni online, so I just threw him in. Well. So shout out to Norm. Shout out. Uh, oh, a disastrous fire, 1975, at J.H. Brands. Do we know the arson? <laughs> well, I don't know this one in particular. <laughs> <laughs> but notably, so at the time, 1975, there was the fire. They held all the classes in the gymnasium and the library. Oh, that must have been chaos. That must have been great. And then uh, by the spring of 1976, classrooms were renovated and a new wing was added to the school, which included the industrial arts and human ecology facility. Mm. And that industrial arts room is where I would have spent 80% of my time. Nice. Nice. When they opened J.H. Bruns, like right 1972 to 1980, the school embraced a differentiated staffing model called STAG. Oh, I've heard of this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it meant that the staff was committed to an open area and team teaching approach. I know nothing about it, but I do remember when STAG, what was, what year was this? Like 72 to 80. Oh, yeah. No, okay. Then I don't remember when it was implemented. (laughs) But but I do recall hearing about it. That kind of makes sense that they were all in the library and gym, because if they were team teaching in an open area concept, mm-hmm. it would have worked. Okay, get this. During the 1974 to 75 academic year, the open area team teaching model evolved into the Trump model. Uh-oh. No relation. Okay. The Trump model originated in Oklahoma and was named after Lloyd Trump, an American educator. J.H. Brands was the third school in Canada to adopt this model. An important aspect of the model was the continuous progress concept. Unit packs were created by teachers and the students worked at their own pace. There was also some weird thing where they had to like meet with their teachers. Like for benchmarking? Yeah, like daily kind of focus group (laughs) situations. You know what's interesting? It kind of sounds like... The direction educa- education's headed again, like it's yeah. going back that way. Has when did um, did they stop the, that stag program at some point? Funny you should ask. <laughs> 1980 <laughs> to 1996, the open area concept of teaching became obsolete, mm. and the semester system was full, firmly entrenched. Uh, school became highly structured. More walls went up. The open area model was completely disbanded, and the stag system was terminated. Does it say why? Just not successful? No, it was just discipline at the school was enhanced, and the classroom was the sole focus of monitored learning. Now... And they brought back the the switch? The words, like, liberal and conservative (laughs) (laughs) are used to describe these two models. Oh. So the stag system would be more like a liberal, Mm -hmm. loosey-goosey kind of thing. Okay. And then getting rid of that was more of like a conservative... Walls. Discipline. Okay. Yeah. I thought that was interesting. It is very interesting. I've learned something about education today. <laughs> it's meta. Okay, we're on to my third school. Oh, okay. The Collegiate Institute. Located at the University of Winnipeg. 
Oh, yeah, I actually looked at going there briefly. It was founded in 1873 within Wesley College. Are they kind of cheating, though, with that start date? Like, could you go... This is grade 12, right? This is like high school, high school. Oh, I thought the collegiate was only grade 12. No, but grade 12, there's like an accelerated program that's kind of gets you into university faster. Oh. But it's a full Today high school program. Okay. Like grades 9 to 12. Oh, okay. It's considered the oldest high school in the province of Manitoba. Yeah, but again, is it cheating? Is it borrowing on the start of the university? It could be. <laughs> I mean, I don't know why I care, <laughs> but... <laughs> I think the cool part, it's located in the south end of the University of Winnipeg campus. Hmm. In the four-floor stone sand castle yes. looking building. Yeah, with I the big lawn building. and the yep. stuff. And that's also the flagship building for the U of W. So I always think it's interesting that when they have like materials and things, they always show that building. Did you know that the castle mm -hmm. underwent extensive renovations, completed in 2006, which totaled over seven and a half million what? Focusing primarily on the stone exterior, which mm. had been heavily worn down over the century. <laughs> Just in a century. Yeah. You know, a thing or two might change. But uh, yeah, I do recall the scaffolding on the front of the building. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. They also got a new roof and new windows. Nice. What I loved about going to the collegiate was it was like this kind of adult sort of feeling. Yeah, like you would drink coffee in class and you could sit on your desk and talk freely about brave new world and <laughs> <laughs> all the concepts and then you could use all the university facilities like you can cool. go to the cafeteria and they had a vending machine with hot soup in a can <laughs> <laughs> well i do recall <laughs> like these are important things <laughs> i recall considering going there briefly mm -hmm. and w like one of the big draws was they treat you like yeah a university student they don't care whether you come or you don't Yes. They don't shame you into going to class. Yes. I don't really ever remember being shamed into going to high school. But I just remember still. it was a struggle, and going to the collegiate was not a struggle. Okay. Off the How website, it's a, I was only there for one. Why? Well, because I was, I was on the move. All right, yeah. Rolling stone. <laughs> I was moving around the city. No moss on you. <laughs> uh, from the website, the, colleg the collegiate is a safe and stimulating atmosphere, free from distractions and disruptions. Indeed. I'll tell you this, that canned soup was a heck of a distraction. <laughs> I could just hear Hot it. Hot canned soup out of a machine. Was it still in the can? Yes. No. Yes. It was a hot How? can of soup. How did... <laughs> what? It just, it doesn't seem right. <laughs> it doesn't seem like you should drink something that's been indefinitely hot. <sighs> wow. Yeah. I wonder where all those machines are now. <laughs> Japan. <laughs> uh, notable alumni. You? You ready no. for this list? Not no. you, because you didn't go. No. David Asper. Oh. Luke Doucette. Oh. Musician. Jeff Golfman. I'm not sure who that is. He founded Prairie Paper with Woody Harrelson. Cool. That's kind of cool. Uh, Jeff Gray, football player. Okay. Wob Canoe. You may I know have who heard he of is. him. Yeah. Chantel Kraviazic. <laughs> no. You may be familiar. <laughs> and Ash Moda, CEO of Mondetta. What do you know? Uh, the mascot. Wesley Coyote. <laughs> Wesley Coyote. Wesley, Wesley Coyote. Coyote. I guess because the Westman? Wesley Coyote? I guess. I don't know. 583 students. It's not that big. It's not that big. And the teachers are pretty cool. Nice. Do, do you call them teachers or profs? I think you just call them by your first name because they're so cool. <laughs> <laughs> and they call you by their by your last name because they're so cool. They're so cool. Uh, Murdoch McKay, I was only there for a week. Mm -hmm. but Do I we feel... even talk about that then? Well, I wanted to say this. The school was named after Murdoch McKay, a prominent physician, leader of the Manitoba Liberal Party, and member of the provincial legislature, and a longtime Transcoda resident. You know what's interesting? Not that. No, <laughs> certainly not. But I did just think of the fact that if you have a school named after you, mm -hmm. you're not alumni of that school. <laughs> no, it's weird, right? <laughs> Notable alumni, Susan Ock. Of the... Uh, Olympic speed skater. Yeah, yeah. Bradford Howe, much music VJ. Oh, I, okay. Cool. Russ Romaniak, 
hockey player? Don't, not familiar. He played 102 NHL games. How would you oh, know that? Yeah. <laughs> and Zach Williams, professional football player for the Calgary Stampeders. Ha. Huh. I, I mean, I was only there for a week. <laughs> I didn't get too attached. <laughs> I think that's a good name for a school, though. Murdoch McKay? Yeah. Do you it know what their mascot's like name it. is? What? Murdoch. That's uh, a little un- uninspired. Right? Unless it was a dog. Murdoch? This is also <laughs> Grant Park. <laughs> their mascot? Pirate. Yeah, because they're... Yeah, but does it, does it name Park like Pirate? Pete? Or... <laughs> Phineas, or uh, there is some lore about it. I didn't even Pete look the pirate? that up. No, Paul the pirate. Yeah, some. It Grant. needs to be an alliteration. Pork. <laughs> do you Grant uh, Pork the pirate? Do you know the notable alumni from Grant Park? <laughs> Me. Well, you. <laughs> well, notable Your to entire whom? family. No. Yeah. <laughs> uh, my nephew. Okay, Andrew Harris, football player. No. Samantha Hill, Broadway performer. No. Jennifer McArton, diver. <laughs> <laughs> Because Winnipeg is you? known for for, for, diving? for being landlocked for 3,000 kilometers. No, I think it's every... like jumping off a thing into another thing, that kind of diver. Oh. oh. <laughs> Marty Morantz, member of parliament. Oh, Lord. Jim Carr, member yeah. of parliament. Mm-hmm. That's all I got for you. But your, also in the neighborhood. Your I, child. Would you, would you consider Kelvin to be the Grant Park's rival school? Yeah, that's probably fair to say. Want some fun facts about <laughs> Calvin? Do I? The school was founded in 1912 uh, okay. as Kelvin Technical High School, designed by your favorite, J.B. Mitchell. My favorite. And built between 1910 and 1912 by the construction firm of J.H. Tremblay and Company. There's that two letters and last name thing going on. They used structural steel from the Vulcan Ironworks, Tyndall Stone, and Leary Red Brick. Yeah, yeah. What's this Leary Red Brick all no about? Idea. <laughs> I'm a little leery about it. <laughs> um, many Kelvin High School students fought in World War II. More than 50 were killed in battle. Oh my. And this inspired the 2005 documentary, The Boys of Kelvin High, Canadians in Bomber Command. Oh, yeah, produced yeah. Produced by Clifford Chatterton. Do you know that name? No. Sure. Well, you will know that name. Okay. He was a distinguished Canadian Forces infantry commander, Kelvin High School alumnus, and CEO of the War Amps. No way. Remember the War Amps commercials yeah, with Cliff Chatterton? Of course I do. Huh. I went to the Kelvin. The Kelvin. The Kelvin. Uh, the original 1912 three-story building was replaced by the current one in 1964. Have you seen that original building? Yes, it's glorious. It's a behemoth. Yeah. It's like bigger than our old city hall. I know we're not going into any detail on St. Mary's Academy, but did you know that the two buildings are connected by a tunnel? <gasps> That's interesting. Yeah. I like that. I don't think you can go through it anymore, but it was like a way to scurry people away from bombs. St. Mary's. Oh. Yeah. Do you want to hear this notable alumni list? Yeah. Oof. Do, do we have time? <laughs> Most of my friends. Gail Asper. Oh. Izzy Asper. Oh. Richard Condy. Animator. Yeah. Filmmaker. Musician. Andrew Coyne. Journalist. Editor of McLean's. Ken Finkelman. The newsroom, writer, mm-hmm. director, actor. Uh, ben Hatskin, founder of the Winnipeg Jets. Really? That's what it says. Mike Keane, Grant Ledyard, Kevin McCarthy, all former 8-inch hockey players. Huh. Marshall McLuhan. Oh, wow. Maggie Morris, CBC radio and television personality. Huh. Fred Panner, you might be familiar. Come on. Duff Roblin. He was my neighbor. Duff Roblin? What? He didn't go to Duff Roblin? <laughs> <laughs> John K. Samson? Who's that? Musician? Sorry. Sorry. Weakerthans? I don't know. I'm sorry. What? Who? Weakerth- Weakerth- oh, Weakerth- I'm sorry. Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> wow. It's embarrassing. <laughs> and uh, another lesser known musician named Neil Young. Oh, of the... Neil Young's. <laughs> <laughs> of the Young... <laughs> Of the young fame? Of the, of the Neil Young fame. <laughs> of the young clan. Uh, do you know the mascot of Kelvin? Oh, hang on, hang on. A clipper. A clipper ship. Yeah, yeah. Took me a minute. The Kelvin Clippers. Yeah. Okay, w- w- what was... Silence. W- well, I mean, you criticize the pirate. Well, no, but I... They've got the ship, we've got the pirate. Oh, I get it. 
Does that mean, is that like rock, paper, scissors? Like <laughs> pirate stands on ship? <laughs> Well, ship sinks pirate? I'm just going to say, <laughs> the ship's going nowhere without the pirate. <laughs> and the pirate's pirate going ship. nowhere without the ship. <laughs> In terms of weird mascots, River Heights has it like locked A down. A ship. <laughs> well, I don't know. Modes of transportation. We've got Winnipeg jets. We've got blue bombers. We're all about the... J.H. Bruns is a bronco. <clears throat> That's a thing. Mm-hmm. I don't think it has a name like Bucky or anything. I'm sure it has a name. It has to have a name. Do you have any fun facts for us about Tech Voc? I do. Ooh. So I thought we'd throw that in there because we were just speaking of technical <laughs> and vocational schools. We weren't. But, oh. all right. <laughs> so Shout out to your dad. <laughs> Proud Tech Voc graduate. Tech Vocian. Um, so Winnipeg's Technical Vocational High School, better known as Tech Voc, was, I'm glad they shortened that for us. <laughs> uh, at 1555 Wall Street was built mm-hmm. in 1949. Uh, the architect was W.A. Martin, William Anderson Martin, if you will. Oh. Uh, the style is, well, actually. <laughs> Don't wink at me while you say it. No, no, no. It, while you say it. <laughs> I, I wanted, know you're going to say Art Deco. I didn't, want to, <laughs> I didn't want to take the pleasure away from you. Do you know what style it's? Uh, is it Art Deco? It sure is. Art Deco and Art Modern. It's a beautiful school. It is said mm-hmm. on the Winnipeg Architecture Foundation site that it of all his school designs, Tech Bach is Martin's crowning achievement. The uh, that's pretty interesting. It also says, and I find this a little bit hilarious. Like he peaked. He peaked. <laughs> it also says it was built at a cost of two point three three one million dollars. It's a weird way to. <laughs> That's to also a lot money. of money for that time. It really is. For that In time? 1949. That's like 112 million now. Uh, did no, you I, just I don't think okay. so. Okay. <laughs> Should we do an inflation calculator? <laughs> that never works for us. <laughs> uh so 2.3 million. Um yeah, in 1949. Uh, carved into the entrance tower are the words knowledge without practice makes but half an artist. <gasps> I like that. Isn't that cool? Yeah. Knowledge without practice makes but half an artist. Uh, it features a crenellated roof line. Are you familiar? Oh, is that like a crinkle cut chip? <laughs> Glass block, yeah. multi-pane grids of windows and doors, rounded, lots of rounded corners and walls. Mm-hmm. Um, there was a uh, an addition which was a separate arched field house that builds on the curves that the original school was designed with. What year was that? Because that's a pretty cool looking... 1962. So really not that much later. It's a, it's a moderner. Moderner. Because it's when you say curved, it's really curved. It's really curved. Moderner. Moderner. That's a word we use <laughs> in architecture. <laughs> Um, fun fact, Uh a tradition of the home, uh, economics department was the annual wheelchair banquet where tech box students prepared and served a gourmet meal to disabled Winnipeggers. We would now say Winnipeggers with disabilities. We would say that, um, other fun fact. I also tried to get into fashion at tech (laughs) box and I applied and then I showed up on the first day and they said, no, we don't have your name. You're not literally not on the list. And that's how I ended up at. Murdoch. Really? So that's pretty not far. Not quite five high schools. That was a big stretch. But my mom lived in Transcona, so I had very few high schools to choose from. Right. And I had, uh, yeah, I hadn't quite explored the Southdale <laughs> option yet. <laughs> that was a wistful <laughs> end to that thought. Um, so Tech Bach, um I don't have notable alumni unless you count my dad and Jim's dad and I'm going to look it Jim. up because there's some good ones. <laughs> um, I, there must be. Um, but really what it was, was I saw the list of notable alumni. I didn't really know any of them. So I didn't list them. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, tech Voc. So the, the kind of cool thing is not uh-huh. maybe just cool to me. Uh, my dad and my husband's dad were there at the same time. Oh my God. TV's Uncle Bob went to Tech Voc. I thought you were. And you're so, telling me that there's nobody notable. I thought you were so excited about my my little personal tidbit there. Wait, what was that? My dad and my husband's dad were there at the same time. Oh, oh that's thanks interesting. Thanks for feigning interest. Did they know each other? 
They did not. That's still cool. <laughs> <gasps> In 1951, there was a teacher named Ethel Bendit. So under the heading of notable alumni, I'm still waiting. Do you have anything? Well, Uncle Bob. Bob Swartz. TV's Uncle Bob and Archie. I'm not, really? I'm you don't remember this no, show? No. Should I? No, probably not. You're probably too young for it. Okay. But uh, Uncle Bob was a, a local TV celebrity. Okay. The children's show. All right. Cool. Shout out. Shout out to Uncle Bob. I'm just looking to see if there's more notable in, alumni. Oof. Oof. Pregnant pause. Oh, I have one more thing for you on Tech Bok. Well, I was going to say it's interesting that they can earn a vocational or an academic diploma. Yes. Or both, right? I have no I idea. Think you can graduate with both. Probably. But like the scope of classes that you can actually take there mm-hmm. is pretty insane. Like you can graduate from there with literally anything. The breadth. I was going to say breadth. And why didn't you? I don't know. Because of all those high schools you went to that didn't offer you Cause I'm looking any at these, breadth. I'm looking at these Timbits. <laughs> and they're made of sweet bread. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. Young okay. Rebecca brought Timbits. Shout right. out to young Rebecca. You know what I was thinking we should do? What? This week. Is we should post pictures from this episode on our socials at Made From Pod. That's a great idea. Young Rebecca gave me that idea. <laughs> <laughs> was she pantomiming socials at you? <laughs> Should we just like feel her eyes burning into the side of my head? <laughs> Are we going to put on like caps and gowns and recreate our graduations? <laughs> no, because I'd have to cut all my hair off. <laughs> oh yeah, you had the really short hair, but so did I. <laughs> oh, See, we would have been friends. Do you have some more fun facts about Grant Park? Well, I didn't give you the facts. Oh my God. Okay, give me the facts. I thought your whole... Trivia lesson was about Grant Park. <laughs> it was. <laughs> and now there's more? So Grant Park High School, located at 450 Nathaniel, built in 1959. Architect was William Enns. E-N-N-S? Yeah. Designed in the international style. Mm-hmm. Very, it has that mid-century mm-hmm. modern aesthetic. Uh, originally 32 classrooms, science labs, art and music, music rooms. That's a big school. It is. Well, could just wait. Okay. Wait, wait, there's more. Uh, an auditorium and shop space. Two editions included in 1961, another 16 classrooms and more specialized space. And in 1963, another 21 classrooms, including a library, language lab, gym, and cafeteria. Most notably is the long arcade under a flat canopy supported by white painted steel columns that mark the entrance on the east side of the building. Parallel to Nathaniel. Yeah. Yeah. Parallel to, parallel with. <laughs> <laughs> parallel of. <laughs> um, so um, that's really it. There's surprisingly little about... there. Well, there's a lot more details about how the additions unfolded and how portions of the structure were added through those additions. But um, as I mentioned earlier, the vast majority of the school is on one level. Mm-hmm which made the school and makes the school really attractive to people with disabilities because you can do everything uh, in a wheelchair without using an elevator. Mm-hmm. So the cafeteria is in the basement, but there it's also accessible via a long ramp, oh. which the skateboarders loved. So you could run Indoor. amok. Indoor ramp. You could run amok in Grant Park. We sure did. And it's pool adjacent. It's pool adjacent. <laughs> <laughs> It's mall adjacent. <laughs> it's really everything was right there. Has all the things. It's McDonald's adjacent. Um, it's a surprise they didn't have more notable in alumni. <laughs> <laughs> um, we even had a DJ booth in the cafeteria, and I got to, I got to like radio up music during the lunch hour. Ooh, do you remember what you played? Yeah, it was all ska. <laughs> all ska. At a girl. <laughs> I didn't have a lot of fans. <laughs> I would have been like right there, skanking right in front of you. <laughs> so that's Grant Park. Mm-hmm. Um, I've got a little like quick facts for you. Smallest school mm-hmm. in Winnipeg, excluding, well, this might be Manitoba, excluding Hutterite Colonies mm-hmm. is Wascata School. But it's not a high school. No. 
option. <laughs> Biggest is Sisler. You already Did called it. she not get the memo? <laughs> <laughs> number of high schools, as far as I can tell, is 45. I think mm-hmm. you mentioned that. Uh, number of high schools named after saints. Would you like to guess? Seven. Did you know that? No. That Did was you a look good guess, that? Yeah, it? it was seven. St. <laughs> Boniface, St. John's, St. John's Saint Paul's. High School, St. John's Ravens Court, St. Mary's, St. Maurice, St. Paul's, St. James Collegiate. Number of school divisions? Six. Number of school division wards in Winnipeg School Division? 71. Nine. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> And I think that brings us to the end of my facts. I have no more facts. I got nothing. Oh, I got one for you. Okay. (laughs) All the good chemistry jokes are gone. (laughs) (laughs) This is where you go, I don't think so. (laughs) Oh. let her in here who bought her a slurpee <laughs> who gave this woman sugar <laughs> where's that slurpee okay i have one final oh, question shit. for you yep if you could attend any fictional high school <laughs> look at young rebecca she can't even young rebecca literally can't even she has to go in groups of <laughs> one or three if you could attend any fictional high school fictional which one would you attend Oh. Well, like, you could go, like, popular movies, like... Yeah, I know, but... The High School and the Breakfast Mm, Club, mm, or, like... No, Ferris Bueller. Ferris Bueller. I was going to say. Ferris Bueller. Ferris Bueller. That looked pretty good. It was pretty easy to get a day off school. And, um, cool cool kids went there. Yeah. Like, smart kids with, like, shenanigans. Yeah. Oh, or, um... Bueller. Wayne's World? Did they they have a high school? They were in school. Hmm? Mean Girls? Oh, yeah. Mean Girls would be a good one. Mm-hmm. That wouldn't be fun. Freaks and Geeks. You don't even go here. Freaks and Rebecca. Geeks. Freaks and Geeks. Would that be a good one for Yes. You? I was going to say Rydell High from oh. Greece. Oh. Oh. They had a great auto <clears throat> auto shops class. Riverdale? <laughs> Riverdale. <laughs> but like old Riverdale. Yeah. With like Big Ethel and Yeah. <laughs> Jughead. Not like the current one. No. Um, no, I would say like Rydell High, because remember at the end of Greece, they had that great carnival? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. that'd be fun. We like that. Cue the music. <laughs> <laughs>